On a glorious autumn day on September 24, 2014, the A320 airliner with the prefix NEO soared into the sky of the French Toulouse. The first product of the new generation has received many improvements over its predecessors. First of all, of course, a brand new engine. On a glorious winter day on February 9, 2016, its big brother, the elongated A321 NEO, got off the ground. And in March 2017, the smaller A319 NEO took off. Despite the fact that the smallest model of the family, the A318, did not see a continuation in the new generation, the trio of freshly upgraded airliners looked great and confirmed for Airbus the status of an Alpha Predator in the sea of aviation. And then the strange things began. Back in 2014, Airbus announced an improved version of the A321neo, calling it the A321LR. And in 2018, they announced that they would make another, even more improved version, called the A321XLR. Hello Aviators, Sky here, and today we will try to answer the question, are there too many 321sts? What is this new habit of making a bunch of versions of the same model? In order to understand where this habit came from, we need to look at what the Airbus A321 is. In early 1988, with the certification and market launch of the base A320, Airbus mustered the courage to continue developing the line. In November of the same year, a modification was officially announced, which received the index A321. The main difference was of course the capacity. The new aircraft received a couple of additional fuselage sections, making it longer by almost 7 meters, 22 feet and 9 inches, which made it possible to add 25 to 30 seats in various layouts. Meanwhile the aircraft became heavier, up to 83 tons, and in order to maintain performance it was necessary to boost the engines, strengthen the structure, slightly rework the wing, install double slotted flaps and add area. Plus, to meet safety standards, instead of small emergency exits above the wing, the cabin received full-fledged additional doors. There are many changes, but they are not so radical, so the unification has been preserved. The A320 and A321 are brothers. However, despite the success of the A320s, the operation of the 321st, which began in 1994, did not impress the airlines. The plane was roomy, economical and reliable, but the size had to be paid for with the fuel capacity, and its range was less than that of the base model. Airbus wasted no time in making improvements. The new modification, indexed A321-200, had a maximum takeoff weight of 89 tons, and this weight fell on an additional fuel tank installed in the center section. The range reached 3000 miles, or 5500 kilometers. As a result, the 321-200 became the main one, and the first model-100 was not even produced anymore. In 2000, the plane was boosted again. It weighed up to 93.5 tons and received a range of 3200 miles, almost 6000 kilometers, which was enough to jump over the Atlantic, in theory. Now, let's step back a little from the plane and look at the market that it wanted to conquer. There are two hefty niches in the world of big commercial air travel. The first one is narrow body airliners, with a capacity of up to 190 to 200 passengers and a range of up to 6000 kilometers, 3200 miles, where the A320 and Boeing 737 rule. The second is wide body airliners, the capacity of which starts from 250 seats and the range jumps beyond 10 to 12000 kilometers. This is where the big guys rule, the smallest of which are the A330 and Boeing 787. Looking at these indicators, you can see a kind of gap. The niche that is called the middle of the market, kind of an in-between area, turns out to be empty. Narrow body aircraft can no longer work there, and wide body aircraft can of course, but with a mediocre economy. And here I have to argue with myself. In fact, this niche is not empty. For a long time, the Boeing 757 reigned in it. With a capacity of 200 to 250 seats and a range of about 7000 kilometers, 3800 miles, it was the largest of the narrow body airliners and in fact the only player in this field. No one really claimed it until the Europeans made their own narrow body. Airbus in this regard had both trump cards and problems and both factors were related to family ties. 
The A321, due to unification with other airliners, was cheaper than the Boeing 757, but at the same time because of unification with the smaller A320, it was lagging behind. There was more space after 2004, when the Boeing 757 ceased to be produced. The market was quite modest at that time, and the 321 still could not fully claim it. There was not enough range, and sales remained small. For example, in the period of 2000 to 2010, 482 airliners of the Model 321 were delivered. If this figure seems large to you, I will say that the 320s were delivered in the amount of 1,762. In the total sales of the entire family, the Big Brother accounted for about 15%. Not an impressive number. But this boring era did not last long. In the late 2000s, Airbus decided to begin a large-scale modernization of its family of narrow-body airliners, basically creating a new generation. New technologies and solutions made it possible to decently boost the airplanes. Besides, the competitors did not sleep, it was necessary to guarantee superiority. The program called NEO, or New Engine Option, was based on the new power plants. The CFM Leap 1A or the Pratt Whitney PW1100G were suspended under the wings of updated airliners. The thrust of the engines remained almost unchanged, but the fuel consumption significantly decreased, and in our case, it was a step forward. And the point here is not in the ecology and the cost of fuel itself, but in the fact that the lower the consumption, the farther you can fly. And this, as we remember, was almost the main problem of the old airliners. The flight range of the A321neo, due to the new engines alone, increased by 500 miles, that is, by almost 930 kilometers. And this time, in the absence of the direct competitor, with the growth of the market niche and excellent performance, the demand came right away. At the time of the first flight in 2016, Airbus already had a backlog of orders for more than 1,100 airliners, and this was with their price tag of almost $120 million apiece. And even such an obvious success did not calm the aviators. Having received the opportunity to increase the range of flights, they took up capacity. Since nobody wanted to rebuild the fuselage, they had to start reorganizing the existing space. The result of this work was the new layout of Airbus Cabin Flex, or ACF. Optimization of all elements of the cabin, including a layout of doors, rooms and equipment, allowed to increase the capacity. Excellent, isn't it? But for the aviators, even this was not enough. Already in 2014, when the base A321neo was not even there, Airbus started improving it. And again, it was about increasing the fuel reserve, which also means the maximum takeoff weight. The new level was 97 tons. The fuel capacity has increased due to the integration of three additional fuel tanks in the fuselage. The flight range increased to 7400 kilometers, 4000 miles, and due to the ACF layout, the cabin capacity reached 206 seats in a two-class layout, and as many as 244 at the maximum. The aircraft made its first flight in 2018, and after certification, which lasted less than a year, the first plane went to the customer. The A321LR has a capacity almost like a wide body, and a range that allows it to fly across the Atlantic without any problems, and not just jumping from edge to edge, but connecting capitals and economic centers. And like in the early 1990s, the LR partially replaced the basic A321neo. The name remained from the base, Airbus has the model 321neo, but not the LR, although technically the LR can hide under the name Neo. Finally, Airbus now had an aircraft that without any reservations surpassed the Boeing 757, which had not been produced for 10 years. What a victory. They also thought so and continued the race. Yes, the performance surpassed the 757 and the economy was almost a quarter better, but the times are already different and the customers are not being modest in their wishes. In addition, in the mid-2010s, Boeing quite transparently hinted that, after the implementation of the 737 MAX program, they would start working closely on a completely new aircraft, with a bunch of the latest solutions aiming exactly at the market of the A321neo. Yes, now, from 2021, you can look at it with irony, but at that time, any news about the Boeing NMA was carried at the speed of light. 
wanting not only to occupy a strategic height, but also to dig deep in it, Airbus at the 2019 Paris Air Show officially announced the creation of the A321 XLR airliner. In principle, the revolution did not happen, and the aviators did the same as before. The structure was strengthened, mechanization was modified, and the maximum takeoff weight was increased by another 4 tons. So now the big guy weighs more than 100 tons, and to increase the fuel reserve, instead of two rear tanks, one was installed, containing 12,900 liters of kerosene, like as many as four ordinary additional tanks. Actually, it was this tank that recently became a reason for safety warnings from Boeing. Being integrated into the fuselage and having a maximum capacity in a confined space, the tank is less protected, and in the event of a fire, it will quickly spread into the cabin. On the one hand, you can say, look who's talking, you champions of safety. But on the other hand, if a neighbor's house is on fire, this does not mean at all that yours is totally safe. Let's hope Airbus gets it right. All these modifications and additions should give the A321 XLR a range of 8700 kilometers. 8700 kilometers. Let me remind you that the range of the first A321-100 was about 4400 kilometers. Aircraft with such a huge range will be able to easily cover not only the Atlantic, but also many routes connecting other continents, including the Asia Pacific region. At the same time, potentially, due to its flexibility, it will be pretty good on flights of higher frequency and lower capacity, sometimes replacing wide-body airliners flying there. By and large, now the only limitation of the A321 remains its narrow body. After all, it may not be comfortable to fly for 7 to 8 hours. Although, again, a lot depends on the conditions that the airline will create. Orders for the future airliner, which in theory should appear in 2023, are not shocking in scale, but are not bad. 12 operators are waiting for 249 aircraft. The catalog price for this device is of course the top among all the narrow-bodied planes. According to various estimates, it walks around the mark of $140 million. And that's the story, full of aspirations and ambitions. For three decades, the Airbus A321 went through several modifications, changed its generation, increased its capacity by 10%, weight by 20%, and doubled its range. It is still quite modest in terms of portfolio, in comparison with its brother, the A320. But it should be noted that, while 10 years ago it accounted for only 15% of deliveries, now the 321 index can be found on about a quarter of the signed papers. Airbus themselves are even saying that in the future, the A321 will account for almost half of the deliveries in this family, and they are especially betting precisely on the XLR. Someone will definitely say that after the glorious 2020, which aviators will certainly remember forever, the world and the industry have changed. And they will be right of course, all the pompous predictions now are nothing more than coffee fortune telling. But let's hope that the industry will return to normal all the same, the factories will start building metal birds again, and we will start flying again not only in virtual reality. We'll see. Well, this is where our Airbus story ends. Like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to watch the videos early, see some exclusive behind the scenes content, or just support the channel, consider joining our Patreon community. Fast flights and soft landings to you.